Hi guys, it's Candace from Beacon Hell Books. I'm here today with a book review of The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C. I couldn't put this book down and I just wanted to make a video as soon as I could about it because I absolutely loved this book. I am a fan of Lisa C's books. Um, I think a lot of the themes that she writes in them intrigue me and interest me. Um, but I think this might have been her best book yet. I gave this book five stars. I highly recommend it to anybody, but particularly to those that like historical fiction, like learning about different cultures, like learning about China, like learning, like learning about tea. Like I learned so much about tea I didn't know about, and I know there's a lot of tea lovers out there watching. This particular book, it deals with mother and daughter relationships, which a lot of Lisa's do, um, which was a great book to read around Mother's Day. And also Lisa C's own mother ended up passing away right before this book was published. So she did get to read it to her. Um, but I think it meant this book has that meaning for Lisa C because of that. Lisa C, if you don't know, she actually is Chinese. Her grandfather had four wives and one of them was Caucasian. He was Chinese and he was like the godfather of like San Francisco's like Chinatown basically. So that's why she feels such a strong pull to this Chinese culture and telling these stories. If you go onto her website at lisac.com, she has a bunch of information. Um, one in particular this video about the Aka tribe, and I found that super interesting. I also listened to one of her talks at a school about the book where she explains how she was inspired by writing this book by walking down a street. I think in San Francisco, it was like an older white couple, and in between them, there was a younger Chinese girl, and what a story that would be. And then the next day, she went to a conference that was about tea, and it just like the book just like came together for her. She knew. It was going to be something. I think the cover is gorgeous. The story follows a girl named Leanne, or as her family calls her, the girl. Um, and she's about seven years old. She lives with the Aka minority tribe in China, where they live in some secluded hills, where they rely, live in quite a bit of poverty, and they rely on tea leaves um, for their life, for their money. Leanne's mom, or Ama, is the midwife and sort of the most powerful woman on the mountain. And even though in Chinese culture the men have more power, her mom plays such a strong and central figure in this book. It touches on a lot of different themes, and I didn't know much about China besides the one-child policy, which it does talk about in here, and a lot of that policy severely impacts Leanne's lives in different ways. Um, but she figures out that the only way that she's going to get out of following in her mother's footsteps is to really try and educate herself. And so she tries and she pushes for getting educated and going to second schooling, which nobody in her family or even in her little group has ever done before. And this is like a central theme into a lot of books that I've been reading recently is females trying to educate themselves to better their lives. It's so interesting because in, in this Aka tribe, they actually promote people or couples sort of being together before they're married. Kind of, they say, trying the machete um, to be sure they're compatible. They also make sure that their animal signs line up. She was born on a pig day. So this particular boy that Leanne likes, Sam Pa was a tiger, born on a tiger day. And they, the Chinese said, you know, this isn't going to work. Her mom thought this particular boy was a little lazy and they didn't agree with the match. But, you know, as young girls often do, they fall in love and, you know, you really can't um, talk sense into them. They get to kind of figure things out themselves. And so Sam Pa goes off to try and get money to allow them to continue their life together because uh, Leanne's family says, no, they can't be together. And after he leaves, she finds out she's pregnant. And you're not 
allowed to have a baby without a husband in their particular culture. And so uh, her mom and her are supposed to um, basically kill what they call this human reject. But Leanne does have not have the heart to do that. And so her mom and her scheme up a way to get the baby to an adoption shelter and the baby actually does end up coming to America. And so throughout, a little later in the book, we start learning more about the baby whose name is Yin Yang, but her American name is uh, Haley. So names have a lot to do with this book too because Leanne ends up getting another book name as the book goes further along. I love how we get to know Haley, um, Lisa, C introduces at first we are reading emails and letters from her adopted parents to the to their mom and then as Haley gets older we start listening in to her letters and also some um psychiatrist like group settings and it touches on adoption and also what Lisa C calls the grateful and angry adoptees especially in China um where there was the one child policy where a, a baby and usually it was a, a female baby wasn't good enough to keep in China but then it, ironically they come to a couple in like America and they're completely their parents entire world like to one extreme to the other and Lisa says like that and she really dug into it. She met with lots and lots of different girls. And they said that it's really a grateful and sad um, group more than anything. But it comes out as anger. Can't recommend this highly enough. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions about this book. And if you've read any other of Lisa C's books, I want to go back and read a few that I haven't. And I want to know which ones I should read first. So thank you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.